But um, anyways, let's hop let's hop into the next part. Bill Ackman, you're my guy still. I forget the company that you work out, but I respect it. And um, yeah. So like, be best industry is for beginner entrepreneurs. We go we gonna go with this one at a time. First one I had on the list, and I think it's the biggest opportunity is media slash content creation. What do you think about that? As an industry for somebody who's like trying right now, like we're, we're doing it too. Like we're trying to hop in the media space, the content creation space. But I feel like a lot of people right now, with like the influx of YouTube, the influx of TikTok, the influx of like Instagram, people becoming famous. I feel like that's a, a place that so many people are starting to like get on or get into like a better position. And I feel like it would be a, I feel like it would do it injustice to not put it in the number one spot. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about this space is that there's something for everybody. You got, Instagram for those people who want to, I mean, it's obvious. It's like a different space. So TikTok is the new one. People, sure. so there's a lot of dancing. Uh, people want to get into that. Maybe flaunting, flaunting looks. That's fine. That's <laughs> flaunting your you. assets. Yeah, your <laughs> assets. Exactly. And then you got like Twitch for like the gamers. Mm. So like there's there's a little something for everybody. Oh, uh, people watch 7.46 billion hours of live stream content in Q3. I didn't, Twitch. I didn't even know they had like stats like that. Yeah, bro. I saw that random stat. I'm like, yo, two point forty. Look up uh, four six billion look hours up on live stream. How many years is one billion hours? How many years is one billion? Hours? I don't even know if he, someone's asked that before. Jeez, what is that? So one hundred fourteen thousand. Yeah. And then they, they have the actual time, stat though. It's seven times there. that, which is like seven hundred. No, they had the actual stat like on the article how many years it was. I, I should probably just pulled that too. I don't yes. get what it was. But so that's got to be niche, like eight hundred thousand years Basically. worth of content streamed in just the third quarter alone on, on just mm. Twitch. So that's definitely right. a huge space there. That's pretty. That's a absurd. The thing statistic. is, people will be on Twitch like. I thought the way I first viewed Twitch when I first heard of Twitch, and I think that it's largely used for that, is like video game streaming. Mm. Like if you're playing 2K with your boys, or like you're playing, you're pretty popular. You just go on Twitch and stream it. But now people are using it for debates. Like this guy is like, all right, guys, hop in my stream, and he's literally like some TikTok guy. He's literally on the stream, like just arguing with somebody else. He's like, you think police brutality is a big issue? I don't. Like, mm. I mean, that's an example. I don't think he actually said that, but mm. like certain things like that. So I'm like, yo, it might be an opportunity in Twitch too. Like some guy be having girls come on his Twitch and like, you know, shake some assets, and his his viewers like to see it. That's it's great. wild. Would I do it? No, but I mean, he's doing what he's doing. Mm. So I definitely feel like the media space is really going crazy, and like especially we were just talking about like TikTok, Instagram, like the fact brand deals, bro. I feel like it's probably the best opportunity because it doesn't take much knowledge. Like I feel like if you got it, you got it. Like you hop on your phone, do a little funny skit. If you could dance, do a little dance, whatever it is. People, these cooking TikTok pages, cooking mm -hmm. Instagram, cooking Facebook pages, going crazy. And then people smile to them. It's like, oh, it's like cook with our noodles, cook cook with my spatula, cook mm -hmm. with this. And now they're making bread like two hundred thousand, like not two hundred thousand, like two thousand a sponsor, like you know ridiculous figures. Just for doing something they would do anyways, they're just recording mm. it. Mm. I feel like, oh, that might be the key. Just do something you're gonna do anyways, just record it. Yeah, no, and, or you're share right. it. Like that's for example, what Twitch comes from. Like you just they already get it. Yeah. yeah. So like for example, that might be that might be the key. I think I think I might just came across something for myself that I'm having an epiphany. It's nothing like it might seem weird, but it's like it's true though. If you just do what you like to do and record it, you're gonna find people that's gonna watch I mean, your stuff and you can stay yourself instead of having to do something wild. To tie that in with the shaking the assets, that's what uh, a lot of people are, are doing with OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because yeah. I mean, that's, wait, that, that's media content creation. Absolutely. That's actually the tier, that's the highest tier of content creation, I would say, and in terms be, of monetary value. Absolutely, bro. People post like their figures, how much they're making, and it's like hundreds of, th I don't wanna say hundreds of thousands. <laughs> No. But thousands of dollars for literally doing what they were already doing, maybe to a different degree, and now it's like a public, maybe slightly yeah, more they're professional. Like, There's no reason I'm just gonna keep sending Jimmy these these assets. I'm gonna just broadcast it to the world. Just gotta pay twenty nine ninety nine. That's like, fair though. It's fair. It, it'll be like, yeah, I think it's like a smaller fee, like a month. Yeah. And then now they're even getting to recurrent revenue, which is just genius too. What do you mean? Oh, it's like a subscription based. Oh yeah, so yeah. Like, they got like Jimmy, John, and Bill. Jimmy, John, and Bill are paying twelve times a year. Oh yeah, yeah. So no, nah, it's absolutely. Yo, genius. bro, and they be having packages like people like I see people advertising it like oh sign up for my OnlyFans right. Mm. It'd be like the first month is like nine ninety nine right, but then you could get six months for like fifteen percent off type of. Mm. So it's like yo, this is crazy. But the thing is, some finesse guys on there. There's some guy who has OnlyFans, but what he does is he shares like. 
like financial information, but like some OD elite, like was that popping? Uh, like, is it, is it getting... I mean, for him because he already had a large following, so people, he's like, "Yo, I'm having exclusive content. If you want to see it, you gotta log into my OnlyFans." Mm. And it's interesting that, like, I bet that's what it was originally designed for. It's only fans. Like, if you want to see more of yeah. this guy, what they gotta produce, and that's what it is. But it's been, it's turned into oh more yeah, of a, yeah. A platform for promiscuous activity. Pr- exactly. That's a great way to say that. The thing is. I might, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay away from OnlyFans because I feel I don't want a whole crowd of OnlyFans. That's just one example me. of. But it's like, yo, it's interesting because yeah, yeah. it's definitely content creation too. If you could find a, sh- I want to see somebody find a strategic way to make a breach on OnlyFans, make with, a like a large amount of money mm. without showing assets. Besides that one, but guy. people are doing that as well. There are girls who they already have a large following. They have assets clearly. Uh. And then they'll, like, say they won't do anything more promiscuous or, like, too explicit, mm. but it's just slightly more promiscuous. Mm. And people are, John, Billy, especially, like, dude, people are eating that up. Yeah, no. Especially oh. using uh, I should probably put that on the list. different I platforms to, uh, uh, what's the right word? Drive Tunnel, traffic? drive traffic yeah. from one platform to another. There'll be girls on Twitch. IG, yeah. TikTok, and OnlyFans. Now they're that, that's that's a business model. That's a fact. So uh, it's genius. The Definitely. thing is, TikTok. I feel like right now, in terms of like uh, uh, the perfect start, is like we can. I feel like I'm giving OnlyFans people like the, the perfect blueprint. But it's like if you show your assets on TikTok, you can literally grow probably ridiculously oh, they know fast. That. They know that. And then you just drive that traffic to the to the OF. Absolutely. Then so the OF is popping, making about 10k a month off the OF. You could make some investments, invest in the stock market. Now you, yo, that's hop sick, on the hub bro. too while you at it. Yeah, nah, 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 hey, nah, yeah, yeah, of course. But if you top OF, then maybe you go to the hub. The point is, like, there's so many platforms, and if you're just creative enough, uh, there's actually one guy <laughs> I saw was on TikTok on the hub who he has no explicit content at all, yeah. right? Oh, f- I feel like I know you're talking about. Yo, and so the name of the video would be like, uh, white guy absolutely gives water. To pass out, girl, and all the videos is just giving her water, like, "Oh, you yeah. good?" Like, millions of views, millions of views. It's, it's funny. Just, it's like, why is this even here? It's hilarious, but it's like spinning off of like that title creation. Yeah. But on top of that, it just illustrates like using creativity to to drive views, basically. Yeah. On uh, whatever platform. Nah, it's tough. Content creation is, is definitely a big, big space, and uh, we got to get into this tool. Cause I feel like another space I'm seeing right now more frequently than I would prefer is real estate wholesaling mm. and I feel like we, we dabbled into it and I don't even want to get too much into it but I mean I'm just putting it out there because it's a market that I'm seeing a lot of space I'm, I won't be completely honest I never did it before so I cannot speak on it but people is talking about they making 20k off of one little deal 30k mm. so I feel like it would be wrong of me not to share this opportunity with people and there's some kid who's like 18 he's like um, he's making 100k a month off of real estate wholesale that seems aggressive, but I don't knock it just off of like if you only make if you only landed one deal yeah. in wholesale real estate, you'd come away with that at minimum five k. Yeah, man. Yeah, facts. And that's off of one deal. So if you made that a full time pre- profession and you just keep grinding it out, you could possibly reach a hundred k a month. I guess the thing is, the job to me, I feel like it's just it's like any I feel like um any sales job is like you got to just call mad heads. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you're eighteen, he he said it. Like, he called like four hundred people a day. If you're calling 400 people a day, you deserve 100K mm-hmm. off, I would say. So I feel like it's a good opportunity, but you got to be built for it. The biggest thing about wholesale real estate is that not enough people know about it yet. If you do your research, mm-hmm. your due diligence, and you're willing to put in the grind, it could pan out. Yeah, nah, the thing is, I feel like I wouldn't even mind like trying something like that. It's just, I feel like it's difficult in New York. I feel like yeah, yeah. in a certain other places, I feel like New York has so many realtors that like if you were to try to find some like low-key deal, it would be so hard. But like, if you live in... I think this kid like literally lives in like some random town. If you live in some random town where like not that many realtors are, you're gonna be able to find a distressed property mm. at a larger rate. Yeah, I say if you don't live in a large city, you could do it. Yeah, effectively like, and efficiently. There's some guy that who's saying like you could do it like virtually. I don't know how that works. Like he just goes. Yeah, on. I heard about that as well. I don't. I don't. It seems a little too difficult for me. Maybe but, if you already had a few deals and you're ready, like you're a reputable source for yeah. like wholesale real estate, you can do that. But to start out initially, I would advise that you be somewhere where there's not a, like a lot of apartments or a lot yeah. of like multi, like uh, apartment complexes. You want to be in like a suburb somewhere or if not, just not a large city. 
I really wonder if there's somebody. If there's somebody, matter of fact, this week what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for somebody who do it in New York. I feel like if I can find somebody in New York, they probably might be interested in talking mm-hmm. on camera right. or on a podcast. But definitely. That. Cause I definitely gotta get more into that. And another way I'm seeing people get money in real estate, which is a lot harder, is the fix and flip model. I think you do need a real estate license to do it though. Mm-hmm. People are making bread off it. Like this guy talking about, he flipped some house, made seventy k. So I'm just saying, real estate. I feel like it's a good opportunity for people that are not getting into it. Also, that Airbnb girl that I should have put on this list too, bro. She just she goes. Signs a lease for an apartment, right? So say an apartment like this, right? If it costs her a thousand a month to rent it, she'll add cool, right? Put it on Airbnb. Probably not good right now because COVID and stuff, but she'll put it on Airbnb, char- up, like, charge it for more. Like, I don't know what the mathematics would be like, but if it's like a hundred a night and they would book the whole time, that'd be three thousand. She pocket two. Mm. She pay her one thousand rent. That's a finesse, bro. Yeah, nah, if you have the money to get into that space and it's. Mm. Eat, that's reoccurring dividends yeah. off of holding real estate for sure. There is a slight initial investment that mm. like that's a barrier to entry for some people. Mm. But once you pass that, and like if you have a space that's unused, or you even want to, you have the opportunity to get a space that you won't be using. Mm. Great way to make money for sure. Nah, but the thing, the reason I like it as a finesse is because like yo, she literally renting the apartment but re-renting a rental. How are you re-renting out a rental? Yeah, that's I don't know fire. About that. that sounds kind of and the thing is like. Yo, one like the girl who's talking about it, I'm like, yo, she's a hustler. Like, I can just tell like her whole vibe. She's, she's gonna get it regardless, and that's, that's what got me hype about that. But now my favorite aspect right now, the third industry. So the first industry we covered was media and content creation. Get out there, be on your phone, be on whatever platform. If you feel like you have something that you like to talk about, just do it. You really have nothing to lose. You post it, it gets views or it don't. You really have nothing to lose. You can delete it. It might still resurface somewhere, but you can hopefully delete it. So we talked about media content creation. We talked about real estate. And the third industry that I feel like is going crazy, you know already, is e-commerce and e-products. Of course, of course. Let's talk about it. I mean, revolutionary idea. Like, mm. stocks alone, just because I'm a stock guy, you look at Shopify on, on the market, mm. it's flying up. The reason why is because instead of the olden days, back in the day when you had to Hold you the item. Yeah, you want to sell it. You got to go through inventory costs, maintenance costs, shipping costs. Mm. You couldn't have like a large inventory unless you were willing to put in money to hold all that stuff. Mm. Now with e-commerce, it's commerce made digital. So instead of holding it, you could just have the rights to a product electronic or online and be able mm. to sell something without holding it. That's fine. Long story That's short, fire. it's like China's making a bunch of these products. Mm. If I want to sell X product, that costs like five dollars for China to make and to ship out. These large companies out there, Nike, Adidas, they're already doing this, and then they're upselling it to you for a larger price and taking the cut, which is the dif- difference in between. Now mm. with e-commerce, like you have the opportunity to do exactly mm. that. No, nah, it's, it's fire, bro. And like just to piggyback again, like I'm basically reiterate what you said is like. The fact that it's so easily accessible to everybody is what makes it elite to me. Because mm. like, like you said perfectly, people have already been doing it. It's just they've been holding it actually. But now pe- other people are in the game. It's like, oh my gosh, another dropshipping site, another this, another that. Mm. But it's like, yo, you can make money doing it. It's a lot of money in it. It's a lot of people making a lot of money in this space. So, I mean, I feel like it's an opportunity that people should check out. And it's definitely difficult. It's not easy. But if you can, if you if it works, it works, and there's no reason not to try it. I'd say the main thing, like all the side hustles we mentioned, uh, like obviously these are counters or alternatives to a nine to five, mm. but they take a lot of time to start up. So instead of like mm. that daily hustle of going to work nine to five grind, like these type of grinds take a large amount of time in the beginning mm. until they like start to flourish, like. Social media, you got to build up the following. That's a fact. E-commerce, you got to put a lot of work. As we're starting to see. <laughs> exactly. E-commerce, you got to put a lot of work into the store be- in the beginning. But eventually, over time, like they start to pan out to the point where you don't need to put much time into it because you already did it. Did it. That was your initial investment, pretty much. No, nah, for sure. And like one specific industry that I'm seeing like on e-commerce that's going crazy is skincare. Now, I don't know why... I mean, I guess it's because, like, it's the type of industry that kind of fuels off of insecurity. And I feel like a lot of people might be a little insecure about, like, skincare aspects, like acne mm. and stuff. So if you're having, like, I don't know, people that's in a skincare space right now are seeing ridiculous amount of growth. Yeah, no, nah, it makes sense. Like, if you, have a, if you have a couple blemishes and you have a product that can get rid of the blemish, why yeah. not? Like, that's of course, product. I'll take that. Like, it's the same way there's a lot of hair products now that people are balding. Mm. That's the thing of the past. Like, that's there are products to, to fix that. So, if there's a way to 
improve what you think is a worse situation out of the two, but then of course. Yeah, no, because the, the girl who had went viral on social media, she had went viral because she made a million dollars in eight minutes. Cause like she, basically she restocked her whole store, right? Mm-hmm. She posted like, "Yo, we're live." Sold out mad fast. Mm-hmm. Made a million in eight minutes. Imagine that, bro. Yeah, it's just in skincare, and I just showing me like, bro, skincare goes. I don't know why it goes so crazy, but like I've literally seen so many. Like, even like one of the ladies I had on the podcast before, like Black Girl Sunscreen, basically a skincare company. Like, basically, you know, take care of your skin, mm-hmm. uh, sunscreen that. But she got like uh, her valuation for the company is like five million. Mm, like, but like when she came on the podcast, it was like she had like thirty, not, probably not even thirty. She had like twenty five k subscribers when she came on the podcast. I'm not not subscribers, twenty five k followers on Instagram when she came on. Mm. But she, I checked the other day, she has one hundred fifteen k now. Yo, and like how's she growing so fast? Mm. I, she was on a podcast in April. Yeah, the hardest part's the beginning for sure. She hit today at one hundred fifteen k. Bro, I, I gotta rewatch the episode myself because she must have shared something I had to I had to see, bro. Maybe there might be some hidden gems in there for sure. Nah, cause I, I think it's just her marketing. Oh, and. I forget what this mean. I forget, I'm not even talk about that. But another way to get money, bro, is flipping old stuff. I was doing that earlier, like as soon as the pandemic hit. Like this app called Mercury, right? Yeah, I've heard could, about you, that. You take a picture of your stuff, but I mean, like three hundred something on there, almost right. four hundred. Right. Yeah. Granted, I did sell a pair of Jordans. I was like one forty something. So that that was like the bulk of it. But I was selling like mad, ran like jeans. I had mm. hoodies. T-shirts, whatever. I had something the other day I was supposed to ship. I didn't even ship it. It was too heavy. But, like, yo, that app goes crazy. So, I'm telling you, if you want to flip stuff, yo, literally just look around your house. You, it can be anything random. Like, people will be buying the random stuff on it. If you see it, be like, yo, this is fire. Take a picture of it, throw it up. You never know. But just be wise with the pricing. Like, sometimes I be going crazy, like, trying to charge $40 and that's really, like, 15 mm. And Then you lower the price. They're like, all right, bet I'll pay that. So, it's just, it's just, like, a balance. But, no, definitely that flipping is, is a lot. That reminds me. There's, just like, some guy who, like, he like committed. He was like, "I'm gonna sell this cup of sand and trade it in like for higher and higher value oh, I until I could get a Tesla." No way he got it. I don't know if he got it yet, oh. but he's like pretty close. He's like on like this. He just got like a super nice car. But it all started. He went to the beach, scooped up a grain of sand, sold that on eBay, and then just kept flipping up. So it's possible, but like all these things just take a lot of time. I think I probably bought it himself. <laughs> he <laughs> might, he might, he might have. I'm trying to say that that's fire, though. but there's people who like who actually do that too. Like mm-hmm. this one guy. I remember he said like. I think it was in New York. It was like literally a similar video. He's like, he's gonna start off with this amount of money, and he's gonna try to flip it. I don't know if he made the goal, but nah. Flipping, that's basically. I feel it's all. That's really all businesses though in any course, aspect. It's literally just getting a product and flipping it just repeatedly. Either, either product or service, yeah. And repeatedly and at a, in, in a way that's scalable. That's really what all businesses if you really break it down. It's just constantly flipping stuff or constantly adding value. But no, I'm telling you, check out Mercury. It, it's definitely a lot there. 